My name's Wendy Wonderlust. It used to be Wendy Wonderlust, but the lust is long since gone. Um, now, the first piece I'm going to read is a tr uh, trilogy, and it's called Reading on the Steps of the Gatwick. So does everybody here know what the Gatwick is? It's a dilapidated old private hotel where you can stay a day or live a lifetime. I've done 10 years of my sentence there so far. <laughs> and it has a nice marble staircase where I often sit and read at night. Now, isn't that rude, laughing at you because you're reading? There's nothing wrong with reading. I used to read a lot myself. Laughing at you because you're reading. Reading's a good thing to do. I used to read a lot myself. Do you go to the library? Reading's a good thing to do. I had to stop reading. I used to go to the library, but I couldn't concentrate anymore. I had to stop reading. Now, isn't that silly? I couldn't concentrate anymore, wondering if my man had another woman. <laughs> now, wasn't that silly? Because I was right, wasn't I? Worrying about whether my man had another woman. Now, wasn't that silly? Because I was right, wasn't I? Worrying that my man had another woman. He was screwing my best friend. I was right, wasn't I? They won't let me see my children. I haven't seen them for 13 years. Now, isn't that rude? And the second part's called Honest Whore. Wendy, she cries, running up the steps. Have you got a pen and paper? I want to take that cunt's name. He has no right, right to talk to me like this. Have you got a pen and paper? I'm going to report him. He has no right to talk to me like this just because I'm a working girl. I'm going to report him. Who's he to call me a cheating whore just because I'm a working girl and charged for what I do? Who's he to call me a cheating whore? The real cheating whores are over there. I charge for what I do and provide an essential service. The real cheating whores are over there, leading men on at the nightclubs. I provide an essential service. They lead men on and give them nothing. Leading men on at the nightclubs. Without me, there'd be more rapes. They lead men on and give them nothing. I'm an honest whore and proud of it. And this one is called Speed Dating at the Gat. <laughs> Do you mind if I sit here on the steps? My name's Harry and I'm 47 years old and everything's in good working order. I'll never let you down. My name's Harry and I'm 47 years old. I got the body of a 20 year old and I'll never let you down. Don't do no drugs, chore for alcohol. I got the body of a 20 year old. I got a clean bill of health. Don't do no drugs, chuff or alcohol. And I always wear a condom. I got a clean bill of health. I've given up beer, wine and mefo. I always use a condom and I got the stamina to prove it. I've given up valium, heroin, heroin and methadone. I can do a hundred push ups in a row. And I got the stamina to prove it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can do a hundred push-ups in a row. Watch me do my push-ups. 77, 78, 99, 100. Now, how about it? My name's Wendy. I'm 64 years old. I've given up sex and I just want to read my book. out of date, I'm almost 70 now, but um, I thought I'd go backwards again 
and give you a piece that's called Jeep Woman's Recipe for Postmenopausal Women. And I'm afraid I haven't got my shopping Jeep with me today, but anyway. Number one, dress warmly but lightly in bag lady layers. You can easily take on and off. Number two, this is obviously for the women here, always carry a fan so you can cool off delicately. Number three, Dress to please yourself and keep your facial hair. Number four, exercise daily, even if you're doing it from a chair. Number five, refuse all hormonal treatment and try natural remedies. Remember that your mood changes are other people's problems, not yours. <laughs> Six, practice retaining fluid. If the toilets are closed, piss on the floor. Old women can get away with that. <laughs> Seven, do everything you ever wanted to but didn't have the time to do. Eight, enjoy sex. You can't get pregnant now. <laughs> Nine, if you're sick of sex, plead old age. If your husband objects, get rid of him. Ten, refuse to work for the doll, have a case manager or work till you're 70 unless of course you want to. Point out that young people and refugees need jobs. <laughs> 11, spend all your money on yourself. Don't leave it to the kids. <laughs> 12, sell your home and shift to a large private hotel and live amongst prostitutes, wizards and thieves. Woo! It's more fun than maintaining a large place by yourself. Yeah! <laughs> 11, Oh, 13, sell your life story on the street at $3 a copy. Remember, everyone has a story to tell. Four, rem 14, remember that old age is a license to do and say as you please. Yeah. And 15, which loses a bit because I haven't got it with me, always remember that your Jeep is your best friend. Okay, this is one of the first poems I wrote. It's about working girls. There's a lot of working girls at the Gap. Most of them don't actually live there. Well, they don't pay rent, actually. I'll rephrase that. A lot of them do live here. They just don't pay rent. One of them lived for a couple of years in um, our bathrooms. So this one goes, Gap girls, cat girls, creatures that are... Night girls, slim girls, thin girls, very rarely fat girls, young women in their prime, growing old before their time. Night girls, fright girls, flaky skins and toothless smiles, staking out their midnight aisles, push and tush up for sale, pay your money, get your honey. Drug girls, dope girls, Life without hope, girls. Trading sex for drugs and dope to give them cause to help them cope. Sad girls, mad girls, very rarely bad girls. Children all, children all the way somewhere in another person's care. Black girls, white girls, nice in spite of shite girls. Girls just doing what they need to get their heroin and speed. Show girls, joke girls, poke for every bloke girls. Tourists flock to laugh and stare. Don't give a fuck or give a care. Gap girls, slap girls, take it up the back girls. No need for condoms here. No one gives a fuck or care. Girls at risk, girls in danger, doing sex with every stranger. Drug girls, mugged girls. Good on survival girls. Dead on arrival girls. Social dregs, sex on legs. Locals pray for their demise to make their housing values rise. Ends the night, comes respite. For the cat girls, for the cat girls. Go to bed girls, lay down your head girls. And dream girls of a better life, away from all the stress and strife of the cat girls. Go to sleep, girls, while we weep, girls, for the gap girls. Yeah! 
And did anybody go to that vigil at the gatehouse? Yeah. It's good that somebody finally took notice of it. Took notice. Yeah. Tracy, I know, Tracy Conley. Um, is there anybody here who could do a bit of miming? You could, Dale. Uh, this is just a silly piece, so you can do it from down there. You can hear what I'm saying. It's called Something Funny in the Dunny. Yes! <laughs> Billy Hunt in the third floor dunny turns his head, sees something funny. Probably gets stabbed in the chest. <laughs> Get stabbed in the chest. <laughs> I don't think I've got this with me. Probably get stabbed in the chest. Wards the next blow off with hands out pressed. Two days to fasten up his zip. He wanders down, wound compressed to the office seat to take a rest. Along comes Cassie's little wife, about to double his trouble and strife. Sees his zipper's still undone and thinks that he's been having fun with the working girl down the corridor. Up jumps Billy to protest. Blood starts spurting from his chest. Ambulance arrive, three minutes tops, closely followed by the cops. They all think that Cassie did it. Office staff and friends confirm it. Cassie has her own explanation. Says he's into... Self-mutilation with scissors. When at the Alfred they arrive, nurse says he's lucky to be alive. Cassie is swiftly exonerated, but the cops are left exasperated. Billy's better at sealing lips than he is at fastening zips. He's not dumb, he'll stay mum. He's Billy Hunt, not silly cunt. When next she pisses, he'll carry a weapon, a gun he'll purchase for his own protection. But ladies and gentlemen, who'll protect us from Billy and his gun? True story, or at least Billy's version. is a piece that was written for us, especially for the Gap Week, written for us by the St Gilda Police. <laughs> Always wish they could hear it. Anyway, all the words in this poem come from them. Um, so it started one day when a cop came up and he's walking around the building with a photo and he's showing it to everybody. Have you seen this man? He's a bad man. Man, he's a bad, bad man. He's a bad, bad man. But what's he done? He's a bad, bad man. He's a bad, bad man. He's a bad, 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 bad man. Open the door or we'll kick it in, kick it in, kick it in. But there's no one home. We'll kick it in, we'll kick it in, we'll kick, kick, kick it in. There's a warrant for you, you didn't report, you didn't report, you didn't report. But um, I told you I was going to be in hospital and they had to reschedule. You didn't report, you didn't report, did not, did not report. He's stalking you and you don't know his name. Don't know his name. Don't know his name. Well, I've seen him in the street. You don't know his name, you don't know his name, don't, don't know his name. We can't serve this order without an address, without an address, without an address. But you know he's camping in the basement. Without an address, without an address, without, without an address. 
Just speak to the owners. Don't call the police. Don't call the police. Don't call the police. But I thought the police were meant to help. Don't call the police. Don't call the police. Don't, don't call the police. <coughs> You've not been hurt, so don't waste our time. Don't waste our time. Don't waste our time. But... But this guy who followed me all, stalked me all around the building, he broke into my room and he tried to rape me and he stalked me all around the building and he knows what my room is and he could come back. Don't waste our time. Don't waste our time. Don't, don't waste our time. What do you expect in a place like this, in a place like this, in a place like this? Well, I've lived here for eight years and everybody's treated with the utmost respect. Except the police, of course. In a place like this, in a place like this, in a place, in a place like this. If you're hassled here, you should just leave. You should just leave. You should just leave. But this is my home, and I've been here eight years. If I was some yuppie with my own place, you wouldn't, you'd be out looking for the person, not talking like that. Just, 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 just leave. Don't use that word. It's a naughty word. It's a naughty word. It's a naughty word. But you used it to me. It's a naughty word. It's a naughty word. It's a naughty, naughty word. Have you seen this man? You can all join in. Have you seen this man? He's a bad, bad man. He's a bad, bad man. He's a bad, bad man. Have you seen this man? He's a bad, bad man. He's a bad, 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 bad man. Thank you.